Hello and welcome back to Forward Train College Pre-Press, Print 7577. This is Ben Kewitt, your instructor with part two of our gradient practice exercise. Today we're going to work with color problems and gradients. So anyone who's done a color management in the past may have an inkling of where I'm heading with that. And we're also going to work with the question of gradient mesh versus gradient, or I guess just uh, color mesh versus gradient for colorizing uh, complex shapes. So let's take a look without further ado. Uh, we're going to start with the question. Is this the right one? Yes, okay. So, one of the issues with gradients and making them work has to do with the translation of color between screen and print. Remember that you're, I don't know if you remember, some of you remember, others, welcome to uh, Ben's favorite particular, what do you call those things? Soapbox to stand on and yell at the crowds from. The question of color space. Remember that computers think in RGB color. RGB additive color is the color space of computer monitors, scanners, digital cameras, your phones, everything that projects light at your face to show you things all uses RGB color. But presses use CMYK, subtractive color. And the two don't always play nice. And gradients really shows this. Let's do some gradienting here. So remember that we select a box. We make sure that we're using the fill because I'm not playing the stroke right now. And we're going to choose to have a gradient on it. Now, let's do a thing. Let's, let's gradient between red and black instead of white and black. That would be a cool look, right? Ah, whoop. Who let this guy into the classroom? There you go. There you go, like this. So now I have this beautiful red to black gradient. We could do another one down here too. Um, let's do blue to green because that should make a good gradient too, shouldn't it? So the second one will be blue. Oh, in fact, just let's just do blue to red. That's good enough. There we go. Blue to red with a beautiful shades of purple in between. Gorgeous, right guys? It is here, but this is the wrong color space. In CMYK color, hopefully this will translate well on the screen, recording the screen, recording the screen, and saving as a video. Let's find out. When we switch to CMYK mode, boom, the colors fall flat in a couple different ways. Um, the red to black is more stark than the red to blue, but they both have problems. Specifically, let's undo that. Undo, redo. So this is throwing off your color theory. I know we've all been raised from kindergarten onward to understand how color kinda, at least mostly works, right? If you pull out your paint sets and your watercolors and your finger paints and you start mixing, if you do a gradient from red to black, there shouldn't be a gray in the middle. Why is there gray in a red to black gradient? Likewise, blue to red should just have a purple in the middle of some sort, right? Why is that turning kind of grayish as well? Well, the good news is color physics, I guess it's not really physics, but color mixing and color perception works the way you think it does, uh, except for one thing. You're not using the color you think you're using. When you're using RGB colors and you put a red and a black, it's gonna take red, which is one of the primary colors of RGB, um, let's go ahead and open that up for a moment here. Let's see, okay, let's take a look over here in RGB. Um, this, oh, because I already switched it to CMY, that's why. Cancel. <laughs> let's undo to look at that swatch, huh? There we go. So I open this up here in RGB mode. Red being a primary color in this color space shows up as R255G0B0. That says show full intensity red light. That's what that means. 255 is the maximum value for RGB, which is zero to 255, for 256 shades of any color, or steps of color variance in any sort of a channel there. So that's great. So 255 to zero, and even on the slider yourself, you see if you drag the zero, if you drag the slider back down, you can watch the number goes from 255 to zero, and black in RGB, Remember that RGB is additive and talking about adding colors of light together to make a color or to give you the uh, experience of seeing a color. When you take away all the light, you end up with dark. 
and dark equals black. So black is zero, zero, zero. So a gradient from red to black is naturally within the wheelhouse of RGB color because all you do is tell the computer to start out with full light on this side and no light on that side. Dunsies. It's happy, we're happy, it's all great. We love it. But let's do that thing again. Oh, because I looked at a swatch. I have to do it again. File, document color mode, CMYK, and it falls flat. Let's look at this same swatch again. Now that we're in CMYK, let's look at what the swatch for red is. Of course, it's a translated RGB red, but let's look at it anyways. Now, when you're in CMYK, red is no longer red. Red is now kind of orangey. Red is technically made out of magenta and yellow. So to make red, you have magenta and yellow. Pure CMYK red is 100%. This is a little bit off because it was a translation of the RGB value but we can pump it up a little. It's 100% red and 100% yellow. That means that you print a solid color of red over a solid color of yellow, fully filled in, and those two on top of each other give you the reddest red that you can possibly red within CMYK. Let's then also look at what black looks like here. This isn't as bad as it should be. Um, CMYK, RGB black is its own problem, but let's just say that in black printing, In printing, black ink is 100% black, and it knows that, and it will idiomatically translate, even though the swatch up top shows that RGB black turns into kind of a strange rich black with 90%-ish coverage of all the colors, which is not correct for good printing. But when it translates black to black and it knows what it's doing, black is a primary of CMYK, so black becomes just its own color of ink. So I know I yacked your heads off here, but here's how this all comes together to make this gradient not work, why it doesn't look good. So while in RGB, we are asking it to start with red light and slowly turn down the dimmer switch till it's off. That's beautiful, that's clear, that's crisp, that's wonderful. CMYK, the same colors are not asking it to do that. In CMYK, we started out, we've established the red is 100% magenta and 100% cyan, and the black is 100% black and nothing else. Therefore, in order to get from all yellow and all magenta to only all black, you have to lose the magenta and the yellow. So as this goes gradienting across, the yellow and, uh, sorry, red, red, the yellow and magenta that makes the red slowly dithers off just at the same time that the, the black is turning on and starting to gradient up. It's kind of two gradients on top of each other, really, if you think about it. It's that red color disappearing and the black color appearing. So right here in the middle, we can do this now in the new version, Whoop, undo. Why can't I do this now? Oh, you click under, that's why. Click right there. The middle color is 50-50-50, as it should be. The dead center of 100%, 100%, sorry, 0, 100, 100, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 100 is going to be 0, 100, sorry, 0, 50, 50, 50. Half magenta, half yellow, half black. And that turns out to be kind of a warm gray, brown, bleh, and bleh is a technical term for this. You end up with that color because that's what you're asking to do. Likewise, let's take a look down here. When you do the um, blue to red, you should be getting a purple, but in the middle, you're not as much because, let's look at this. Blue is basically cyan and magenta. Let's not even talk about percentages because I don't want to read those off. So cyan and magenta is blue. Magenta and yellow makes red. So the magenta stays solid across, but in the middle, boop, you're going to end up with a spot where the cyan and the yellow both have to transition in and out. And I know we may not have covered this in this class yet, but whenever you mix cyan, magenta, and yellow in equal quantities, you get gray. So you get kind of a reddish gray here because the yellow and the cyan kind of balance each other out. As, as kind of opposites there, and uh, they turn it somewhat trichromatic, and they turn it into a complex and not very vibrant color. So how would one fix this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's, let's see how to do these things properly. So first off, let's fix the red to black here. 
Um, if we do this, we're going to want to think about how are we telling the computer to do what it does. So in order to get from red to black, we need to get rid of the part where it's gray in the middle by telling it a command that's actually gonna work all the way across. So let me get rid of this mid midpoint that we don't want. If I double click on the black, here's my secret for this. Let's start with red. And then let's add black. So now, the same thing is it's a gradient from red, but the, re the element that makes it red never goes away. The red continues on the whole way across and you just add black to it. So we start with, again, over here, let's just round that up to make it easy. All yellow, all magenta, all the time. Over here, they're still there, but they've been joined by their friend black and all three are getting along just fine. And unless you have a regular, normal, single color black right next to this, you won't notice the difference on a page if this is a darker black because it has the other colors in it. It's just fine. And for something like this, the secret is to cheat and to bring a magenta into the middle. Or not magenta, kind of a, uh, sorry, a purple. So if you drop a purple in the middle of this, that gives you the look you are going for because the purple is a transitional color in between the two, which helps it step and not have as weird a problem. You'll still have a slight issue somewhere because still going from purple to red is still not just losing cyan, but adding yellow. It's a tricky one to pull off in CMYK. Anyways, this has been how to manage gradients in CMYK that'll actually print well. Because if you remember, or sorry, the secret to this is remembering what you're actually working with. The reason that a lot of these gradients fall flat and don't look that great is because you're assuming that the color you see on screen is the color you're using. When you actually pause to think about, well, what does red actually mean in CMYK? It's actually not that complicated. It's just a matter of remembering that you're working towards a print and remembering how the colors are actually built there. I'm gonna put up one more video for us because I'm afraid this is getting too long already. And we'll talk about the gradient mesh tools in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.